There's a guy who has been with uh, Andrade the whole time, but he's, he's never done anything. We were told his name is Jose. And Jose starts to... Yeah, who was this guy? I just told you, it's Jose. He's the third guy when they do interviews. Who is he? Jose! <laughs> who is he? Do you know? Right. There is no more information. Okay, so you don't know. There is a third guy. His name is Jose. That's the extent of the information. But you don't know anything yeah. about him. You don't know why he's there. No. You know everything we know. Yeah. Okay, so who the fuck is this guy? Jose! No, that's not enough for me, you moron. He is Jose. Oh, thanks, chat. I thought we just determined that's not enough. <laughs> oh, there's Jose, they said. Who? No, that's How do I know it was Jose and not Carlos? I don't, because I don't know who the guy is. So That's racist. I'm a Mexican. <laughs> Are you really, Brian? Yes, I'm half Mexican. My father is 100% Mexican. My father swam the Rio Grande to get here. This is all true. Orange was at ringside for the baby faces being a terrible valet. They would throw their ring gear to him and he would let it fall to the ground. So she's, she's balanced on Chris's back. Throwing kicks like she's riding a bicycle. And mm -hmm. Rebel is standing there being kicked over and over again repeatedly. Let's throw that spot in the trash can. Never do it again. Please. <laughs> the heel talks some shit. The baby face talks some shit. And then they go to Mark Henry in the middle. He goes, well, that's enough talk for tonight. It's time for the main event. Crowd love Pillman because he's from Cincinnati. They love Moxley because he's a big star from Cincinnati. And they got their... Uh, other heroes celebrating, they all went home happy, and that was the end of the most watchable wrestling show on TV. Oh, we got our first question here. What? Okay. Who is Jose? <laughs> Thank God we're doing a Q&A. I don't know. What a brilliant idea. Granny, do you even know who Norm MacDonald is? No, I don't. Really? Oh, he was the greatest comedian there ever was. It reminded me of a lot of the things people said about Bobby Eaton when he passed away. Because Bobby Eaton was never the star that a Hulk Hogan or a Randy Savage or a Ric Flair was, but he was a wrestler's wrestler. And if you ask a wrestler what they thought about Bobby Eaton, they'd say he's right up there with the best. Ric Flair loved him, Randy Savage loved him, everyone who worked with him loved him. Norm MacDonald did not sell like a Jeff Foxworthy or a Tim Allen or an Eddie Murphy or a Bill Cosby. But if you asked comedians, who's your favorite comedian, they would all say Norm MacDonald. You know why they say that, Vinny? Because he was the greatest comedian of all time. Can we get more of producer Rob? Doing what? Take the seat. Is Craig here tonight? No. Craig has a day off. You usually don't let him talk very much, so I didn't know. We just put a, a yeah, there's Craig. A big black <sighs> hole, it appears here. If you could go back and tell your 25-year-old self one thing, what would that be? How old was I when I was 25? What? Tell me you didn't no, ask I, that question. <laughs> what, you, what year was this? Jesus Christ. 2000? I think it was Saturday Night Live or Sunday Night Live or something. Undertaker and Ver Reigns versus... Undertaker? <laughs> Wait a second. Sunday Night Live with the Undertaker? <laughs> Let's start over again. You guys have to make out of fun of everything. Well, well I can't figure out what Sunday Night Live is. So. I don't know. I, okay. Maybe, maybe it's not. But anyway, All right. Undertaker and Reigns against Shane and McIntyre. It's about rope breaks. And who can force their opponent to use rope breaks? I just want to see you guys fight. It shouldn't be this hard. It shouldn't be this hard. Vinny, it's not a fight. It's a technical wrestling match. It's pure rules. You're not allowed to fight. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. It's funny you mentioned that because suddenly a goddamn strike exchange breaks out in this pure wrestling match. <laughs> well, I don't know what everyone's contract status is, but it seems to me a lot of times at Final Battle, the people that sign or re-sign win. You know what I'm saying? Funny how that works out. And the people that don't leave. So anyway, uh, very good pay-per-view, I thought. So uh, second week in a row that Dynamite beat Raw. And next week with Raw having, I mean, unless they decide to hotshot the title again, there's a very good chance with AEW at Arthur Ashe and a Rampage show and a Dynamite show that are pay-per-view quality shows. Uh, very likely it will be the third week in a row that Dynamite tops Raw on the cable charts. CM Punk joins the commentary desk, gets his whole entrance. CM Punk is like Bill Goldberg in that they are having way, way, way more fun after their comeback than they did in their first run. So Adam Cole is a megastar. I don't know if y'all knew this, but he clearly is a megastar. And all I can think is they wanted to make this guy a manager.
If he loses that car, I mean, there's got to be like a follow-up, right? How's he going to get around? <laughs> there's other cars. Maybe Samuel will buy him a car. So he says it's time to have a conversation with the late Brian Pillman. He first looks skyward and then says, what am I doing? And looks down below instead. You know, the Suzuki incident, have you got on, on uh, Twitter and uh, search for Suzuki incident? I have not. Go do it. I, they're, I, they're fucking amazing. I've seen enough posts uh, just coming across my time and naturally I haven't had to seek them out. And this was a big fucking deal that he got his song cut off. I thought it was a bigger deal they got four minutes on television for a fucking match. Apparently I'm in the minority. But it was a disaster all around. It was a very... This was a Montreal screw job of the 21st century, Vinny. Rosario Dawson jumps on Malachi Black's back and he tries to shake her off and she puts up a fight. I was very surprised by the intensity of how hard he was trying to buck her like a Bronco and she was trying to stay on like a cowboy. Whoever had the idea to reach out to Dan Lambert and said, come and say, come in and play Jim Cornette. Brilliant. He notes the merchandise stand is always out of shirts, especially in men's small and women's XL. This ain't CM Punk in Chicago. No. It's not Daniel Bryan in Aberdeen. No, it's not it's Britt Layla Pittsburgh. Hirsch. Yes. It's not Britt in Pittsburgh. I love Layla Hirsch, too. But I don't believe. It's not the end of the world that Layla Hirsch lost in her hometown. Now we know it can happen. And the first thing Andrade does when he speaks, it says, I am here with my assistant, Jose. And I begin to laugh all over again. I'm begging every website to not write anything I'm saying because this is not news. It is, it is purely speculation. Do you guys understand? Don't write a story about this. I am begging for no press. So when they wrote off Chavo, my first thought was they're bringing in Ric Flair to be Andrade's mouthpiece. He's going to be his father-in-law. Ric Flair and Andrade. What a... You know what I'm saying? It would be an effective pair, yes. Yeah. But this uh, dark side of the ring about the plane ride from hell, I know people that like Ric Flair a lot. Mm-hmm. They don't think Flair's going to be used once this thing airs. So Hook gets in Punk's face. And then before anything can happen between the two of them, Powerhouse Hobbs waylays Punk from behind. Punk goes down. You've never seen someone be so great pointing and laughing as my hero Hook was here. I don't think it's an accident that both Brian Danielson and Kenny Omega were doing this face-to-face -face promo in plain white t-shirts. Everything here is a message. Everything has a point. They're telling you, we're not going to do a lot of bullshit. There's not going to be a lot of shenanigans, no smoke and mirrors. Two wrestlers are going to have a great wrestling match. They play Suzuki's music. He gets his whole entrance all the way to the fans singing. And then the brawl starts. And we get the three minutes Moxie didn't get last week at the end of this show here. So they made good to you, the viewer. Yes. They made good to to Moxley. They made good to Suzuki. And they're going to make it even better because they're going to have a fucking fight next week. The people who said shit on this show were Dan Lambert, Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho, Dan Lambert, Sean Spears, Don Callis, the fans, the fans, the fans, the fans, the fans, the fans. Don Callis, Brian Danielson, the fans, the fans, the fans, the fans, the fans. Brian Danielson, the fans, the fans, the fans, the fans, the fans, the fans, the fans. Wow. Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker. He looks exactly like Rick Steiner. Yes, same. They, they fucking call they him the well dog-faced gremlin. They may as well put the, head, the uh, headgear on him. But they're not allowed to call him Rick Steiner's son. No. It's fucking ridiculous. So the 2.0, the first thing you notice is this building is a lot brighter. A lot more color, a lot more lights. The plexiglass is gone from the crowd. Did you see Noel Foley's tweet? I did not. <laughs> she had a picture of Cactus Jack. And she wrote NXT. Oh, yeah, I did. I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> Next to it was Dude Love As NXT. And it's true. It actually is That's true. That's absolutely true. It went from true. black and yellow to tie-dye. That's yes. actually very true. <laughs> yes. I, I know it's like a thing and everything like that. Trademark this, trademark that, intellectual property. But, like, 
if fucking Roman Reigns left WWE and he went to AEW as, you know, Greek ransom or whatever, sure, yeah. he's going to be the fucking biggest star that they've got. It doesn't matter if he's not using the same fucking name. Everybody knows who he is. This wedding was fucking perfect. It tied everything together they've been doing in these storylines. This has actually been like a, a multi-year storyline that Dexter doesn't speak. And it all builds to the big climactic finale where he must say, I do. And so he finally says words. And they get married. And it's a happy ending. And I thought that this wedding was just fantastic 